Presbyopia is actually one of probably the most frustrating thing that every single one of us go through. When we're younger, less than 40, let's say, our lens is elastic inside the eye. So you can see in the distance. And then when you look close up, your lens actually changes shape and gets thicker and fatter. So it increases power and allows you to see close up. As we get less young and certainly approaching 40, 45, that lens becomes less and less elastic. So when you're trying to see close up, the lens does not get as thick and fat as it should be because it gets quite firm. That means that your near vision becomes compromised. Initially, you could read here, but then gradually you can read here and then here and then here. And then your arms aren't long enough to see and it drives you completely crazy. This happens to young people and it's the bane of everybody's lives. This is called presbyopia and it's something that happens to all of us. The, the, the treatment is actually simple. You need reading spectacles and often some over-the-counter reading spectacles, some plus ones initially, plus twos, then plus 2.5s, then plus 3.5s are needed for your near vision. It's not a pathology. It's a natural aging process, but it is frustrating for a lot of people. And certainly if you're still active, it can drive you crazy. So presbyopia isn't a disease. It's a natural aging phenomenon. And it hits all of us, unfortunately. Nobody's lens remains elastic into their 50s. And the prognosis is fine because you can wear reading spectacles and that, that can sort things out. But it is very frustrating for people. And so um, often patients seek treatment for it in order to try and give them that depth of focus, trying to give them back that reading vision without spectacles on. There isn't anything simple. We don't have lenses that we can replace, which actually move inside the eye. We tried that, something called accommodating lens, and it doesn't work very well. So you have to use other strategies. And the other, other strategies are usually based on the lens itself. We remove the lens, something called refractive lens exchange. It's the same thing as cataract surgery, but without a cataract. And then we put a synthetic lens into the eye. But we have to do something clever with those synthetic lenses. Now we can put multifocal lenses in, designed to give you distance near and intermediate vision, or bifocal lenses in, or premium monofocal lenses in. And all these three things are options. Each have their benefits and each have their downsides. There is nothing as good as nature. And nature, unfortunately, did think better than we, we can at the moment. And so it is a compromise. Often the people who undergo this are the ones who are really frustrated with having to wear reading spectacles. But they have to understand there are no guarantees and things will not be perfect at every distance because we cannot turn the clock back to when you are 18. So the prognosis is good. Most people cope very well with just some cheap and cheerful reading spectacles or proper spectacles prescribed by optometrists, but there are clever things that can be done. It comes to the question, should we undertake those risks? And it's important for people to understand there are no guarantees. And some people remain unhappy with their distance and near vision, despite objectively them reading pretty well. The visual quality isn't quite the same. So there are things that can be done, but in most cases, I suggest leaving things alone and just using reading spectacles. It's not dangerous in any way, shape or form. It's frustrating and annoying, but it's easily rectified with reading spectacles. And is it life threatening? Certainly not. There's no way that you're, you're going to have run, run into problems with it. It's frustrating unless you and even if you walked out in front of a car, your, your distance vision would be OK. So the presbyopia wouldn't affect you. So it's not life threatening in any way, shape or form. It's frustrating and it's annoying and there are things that can, can be done for it. But it's nothing to worry about as this is normal ageing. So really the diagnosis is based on the patient them, themselves. They find that they could see close up and gradually they can't see close up and they have to move things further and further away from them. And then eventually their arms aren't long enough to see it clearly. And that's when they get frustrated and realize that their near vision is compromised. Distance vision tends to be okay, but the near vision is compromised. Often if you go up to the counter, you can get some cheap and cheerful over the counter spectacles and try them. And plus 2.5s or plus ones should sort it out for you. So it's really diagnosed by the patient rather than the actual, than some somebody else. Of course, you have optometrists out there and they'll be more than, more than happy to examine you and they can make the proper di diagnosis. But really, it's based on symptoms more than anything else. But if you're approaching 40, 45 and you notice that your near vision isn't as good as it used to be, you've got pre presbyopia, unfortunately. And the last question, what are the treatment options? How can I best be addressed? So first and foremost, it's a normal aging process. It's frustrating, but it's not a pathology. So highest up on the list is leave things alone, get yourself some reading spectacles, and that should sort things out. If that drives you crazy and frustrates you, there are surgical options that we can do. 
They tried medical options, and actually there may be some drugs coming out which actually make your pupil a bit smaller, but they're not mainstream yet. There are surgical options whereby we undertake effectively cataract surgery, but on a clear lens, something called refractive lens exchange, and that corrects your near your your short sightedness or long sightedness, but also can give you some depth of focus. There are lots of different lenses out there available. And none of them are perfect. And it's important to understand that. It's a compromise. So we balance up risk and benefit. The risks of the surgery itself are actually small, but not insignificant. People can develop infection. People can lose vision. So it's nothing to undertake lightly. But the safety profile is very, very good. But what isn't completely known for every single patient is how you will react and how your eyes will react and how your brain will, will react to all this. So if we do do surgery on you, it's really important that you're counseled properly about what to expect and what not to expect. And you must have a deep understanding that there are no guarantees associated with this. It's compromised vision. We cannot turn the clock back to when you were 18, but we aim to give you functional vision for distance and near. For example, I'm a bit short sighted. I'm about minus one on each eye. That means that I can drive without spectacles on and I can read without spectacles on. So I'm perfectly happy as I am. If I do wear spectacles, it sharpens my vision up a little bit. If I do wear spectacles for near, it sharpens my vision up a little bit more. But I choose not to wear spectacles because I have that functionality and I'm able to see without spectacles on. And this is why I often tell to my patients that we can achieve that. Do not expect perfect vision at every distance, but you will have the option of walking around without your spectacles on all day. But if you want your best possible vision, then you may choose to wear spectacles on top of that. But it's about freedom from spectacles, but there is no guarantee involved. First and foremost, leave things alone, just wear reading spectacles. If it really does drive you crazy, then the benefits start to outweigh the risks, which are small, and then it's worth going ahead. If it's a minor inconvenience, the benefits start outweighing the risks, and I suggest leaving things alone. But if you want to explore things, see your optometrist, see your ophthalmologist, and they can discuss things further with you.